there's a little bit of me in all of the characters. Um, yes, Katie Lavender is the central character. Um, we meet her on the opening chapter when she's just been made redundant and then she's summoned to a solicitor's office where she discovers that her, her father wasn't her father. And I, I can absolutely put myself in her shoes and because that's the job of an author. You have to empathise, you have to experience your character's pain or their happiness, whatever. Um, so I've always done that. I've been able to picture myself in that very same situation. Um, and so I think by virtue of that, yes, there's a bit of me in Katie Lavender, even though there's a huge age difference. But then equally so, I can imagine myself in Sterling's shoes or Penn's shoes or any of those characters with, within the story who go through all sorts of trauma. Um, and it's, as I say, it's the job of the author being able to emphasise and do it well. And, and you've got to feel that character, feel their pain. <laughs> and, 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 and I think you, you have to be that character as well. So there's a bit of me in all of the characters. And it's been that true of all of my books, um, including the bad characters, the, the lovely bad characters. Do you enjoy <laughs> writing good characters or bad characters more? Both, but as I say, the, the, the lovely bad characters, they're the ones that you can have the most fun with, but of course then there's the danger that you turn them into a caricature and you mustn't do that. You've got to rein them back in a little. <laughs> and, uh, um, but you can certainly have fun with them. I think all authors will say that. There is an element within the story um, that came to me by accident, or not accident, really. it was a bit of a confidence, <laughs> really. Um, and that's happened to me before. Someone has said, they've told me something, you know, that's a, not so much a secret, but is something that is very personal. And then afterwards, I, you know, I've just known straight away, oh my goodness, there's a story there. And then I have gone to that person and said, look, can I take that and turn it upside down on its head and reinvent it, if you will. But that seed of an idea will come often from something that someone has told me. And certainly with the real Katie Lavender, there's an element within the story that um, I was, was told, <laughs> sort of unwittingly really, that I then read about in the newspapers. Um, and that sparked a whole storyline for the book, which, yes, I couldn't have written the book without it, actually. <laughs> As you get older, you do realise, gosh, today could be my last day on earth. I'm going to make the most of it and have some fun and, and work hard and, and just make the most of it. I suppose that is the one thing maybe I've learned. Also, the way my life has gone, um, you know, the changes that I've experienced, dramatic changes. Um, yeah, I, I'm just continuously fascinated. And I, I, the one thing I really have learned is you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. I'll meet someone who is a stranger. And if, if I really like them, and they might not be a stranger for very long. And then it's at that point, perhaps, that they might start telling me things that I think, oh, that's quite interesting. But just recently, and I, it was on, uh, on two long flights actually. Last year when I was going to Australia, it was going there and back. I was told inter fascinating stories by people sitting next to me, which I have stored away and will be in not the book that will come out next year, but the book that will come out the following year, hopefully. They're there. Yes, the ideas are whizzing around inside my head at the moment, but uh, which means I'm not going to tell you what they are. But they were fascinating stories, and um, mm, they, they, they'll be used. But I'm like, the, I've done it all, all my writing life, if you will, but I'm like a magpie. I pick up anything that's bright and shiny, and it might come from a stranger. You know, if I get stuck with a particular scene or dialogue that seems to be stalling, then I'll just bob out to the garden, deadhead a few roses, have a wander around, and then suddenly the brain is refreshed. But yes. I'm very fortunate that I have a lovely garden and, um, and a very nice little study that I love working in. And I love writing here, but of course I do spend a lot of time in Italy. And I'm very fortunate to have an apartment on the lake there where 
when I have the same problem, if I get stuck in a particular scene, I go and stand on the balcony and watch the boats going by on the lake. Which authors do you admire? The first one that comes to mind is Agatha Christie, for sheer output. Extraordinary. I would love to be able to do, I mean, I've just finished my 17th book, so I've got an awfully long way to go, and I don't think I'm going to do it. I'm not going to live long enough, but I just think it's amazing that she created so many stories that are still popular today, that are still being filmed, and, and I think that's truly admirable. Another author I really like, for sheer feel-good factor, H.E. Bates for Darling Buds of May. Now, you know, everyone's seeing it on the television, but the books are absolutely enchanting, and I, and I love that, just losing oneself in a beautiful world. Um, and I, I, I try to do it a little bit in my books, you know, with the real Katie Lavender, the, the garden that features there. It's sort of an oasis of calm, um, and always, yeah, I, I love that, that element of escapism, because that's what a good book is. Do you have any romantic heroes? No, not really. Now, I, television, yes, actors, sort of real. I, I know that then sounds a bit superficial, doesn't it? <laughs> but for instance, um, I would love for David Tennant to be in one of my books and it would be um, Tell It to the Skies. I would love for him to play Noah. In, in later in life. He would be perfect. In fact, when I was writing that book, I imagined David Tennant in the role. <laughs> so yeah, he, he's definitely up there. And then of course, you, you've got to have the Cloonster, George Clooney in there. When I was writing The Holiday, which goes way back when, <laughs> one of my earlier books, I pictured him as Theo. Um, so yeah, so are they my, my romantic heroes? Well, maybe. I'm now 52. Two years ago, I had a significant birthday, and one of my um, promises to myself that I was going to start doing new things, and one of those was to learn to ice skate. So that's a hobby, and that always takes people by surprise. Um, and I've been having skating lessons now, oh, I don't know, for about 18 months, maybe a bit longer, and I absolutely love it. I'm hopeless, I'm no good, you know. I, I'm aiming for dancing on ice one day, of course. <laughs> But, no, 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 it, it, it's just such fun and it makes me stop thinking about work completely. If I have any worries, anything on my mind, any anxiety, I go to the ice rink and I get on that ice and I don't think about anything other than staying upright. <laughs> um, but I love it and, and I have improved since I've been having lessons. So, that's, so that, that's something. I'll never be brilliant, but I enjoy it. So that's a good hobby. Where is your favourite place in the world? My favourite place in the world? That would probably be Venice. It has everything. Um, it's a city. It's a beautiful city. It's got all that history and that culture. Um, it's unique and it's by the sea. And I grew up by the sea. And I've realised as I get older that I need to be by water. And interestingly, most of my books feature water, and I didn't realise I was doing this subconsciously. It's the, the real Katie Lavender. We're there, Henley, on Thames. We have the river. Um, water, very important to me. And so, yeah, Venice, it, it, it's the perfect city, really. Um, but then I love Lake Como as well, but I'm by water again. <laughs> what are you writing about now? I've just finished um, writing The Hidden Cottage and that, that is another book about a family um, because Katie Lavender, she gets absorbed into a whole new family and I loved exploring that. Um, and so I, in The Hidden Cottage I'm exploring it another family because every family is different. You never write about the same family twice because the, I love pursuing the dynamics, um, the interesting, you know, the, the structure within each family. Um, and in the hidden cottage, we have a family where you've got three grown up children, and it's the classic situation three children. You've got the, the oldest, the middle, and the youngest, and why they are the way they are, um, and their parents. But it's not 
just about the family. There's also another character called Owen, who is returning to a place where he grew, where he spent a year of his childhood, um, and it's why he's returned. And, and yes, <laughs> all that exploration of new characters coming together, which I absolutely love doing.